Good afternoon and welcome to NBC6 local midday update. I'm Brad Csack. In our top story this afternoon, Shreveport police continue to investigate two overnight shootings. The first was called in around 1130 on Westover Road. When authorities arrived, they found a 10 month old baby shot in the upper body, still awake and crying. Early reports show the baby and both parents were inside the home when shots were fired. Both parents were not injured. The baby was taken to Oshner LSU Health with life threatening injuries. We will continue to monitor his condition here and on our website at arclatexhomepage.com. The second shooting happened about 30 minutes later. According to police, a man was shot near Hollywood and Broadway. He then drove to West 59th Street where he was able to call for help. The man was shot three times, twice in the arm and once in the shoulder. He was taken to Oshner LSU with non life threatening injuries. Right now, there are no suspects for either of these shootings. If you have any information, call Crime Stoppers at the number on your screen. That's 318 673 7373. In Harrison County, a Marshall, Texas man is dead following a one vehicle accident late last night. Robert Howard Brock was pronounced dead at the scene on Blocker Road near Marshall. The Texas Department of Public Safety responded to the crash around 11 p.m. According to authorities, Brock was traveling northbound at an unsafe speed and is believed to have lost control of the vehicle and struck a tree. Well, turning our attention to the latest in the coronavirus pandemic here in Louisiana, there are now more than 38,000 positive coronavirus cases. The death toll stands at nearly 2600 in Caddo Parish. There have been more than 2300 cases. The Department of Health is reporting more than 28,000 people have recovered from the virus across the states. Oshner LSU Health Shreveport has announced community COVID-19 testing locations in Shreveport for May 27th through the 29th. Testing is open to Louisiana residents age two and older, even if you are not experiencing symptoms. Those who wish to be tested should bring an ID and insurance card if applicable. There is no out of pocket cost for those seeking a test and no one will be turned away based on insurance status. Testing is available at the times on your screen at either location. Those who test will receive their test results within 24 to 72 hours. A local charitable organization is providing funds to LSU Health Shreveport for community COVID-19 testing. The Shreveport Bossier Community of One Com Committee of 100 Incorporated presented Chancellor Dr. G. E. Golly with a $7,500 check in support of the Emerging Viral Threat Lab. The money will be used to assist in expanding and enhancing LSU Health Shreveport's COVID-19 response efforts. The Emerging Viral Threat Lab at LSU Health Shreveport has processed more than 11,000 tests, of which over 6,000 have been from Caddo Parish. Well, captain of captains for the Northwest Louisiana Mardi Gras Association, Tracy Heron, is encouraging local Mardi Gras crews to cancel Mardi Gras events due to the coronavirus. The Mardi Gras parades are still scheduled to roll in early 2021 if it is safe and responsible to do so. Specific events impacted include the theme announcements, coronations, midway to Mardi Gras parties, 12th night celebrations, and grand balls. Heron says, quote, the safety and well-being of the community as well as crew members is our top priority, end quote. She says the crews will continue their community volunteer efforts and joint outreach programs throughout the year. Well, NBC6 is your local election headquarters and today's Shreveport City Council will consider if smoking should be banned in bars. The proposed ordinance from Councilman John Nicholson would also ban smoking in Shreveport parks and playgrounds. The ordinance would also apply to vaping. Casinos and cigar and hookah bars would not be impacted by the proposed ban. The meeting begins at 3 o'clock this afternoon. You can find a link to the full ordinance on our website at arclatexhomepage.com. The United States Attorney's Office for the Eastern District of Texas has announced the resignation of United States Attorney Joseph D. Brown, effective May 31st, 2020. Brown was appointed by President Donald Trump to the position in 2018. Previously, he had served as Grayson County District Attorney. In a statement, Brown said, quote, I want to thank President Trump for allowing me the honor of serving as United States Attorney, end quote. Well, turning to Arkansas now, the most updated numbers were released and there are now over 6,000 confirmed coronavirus cases in the state with 117 reported deaths. Governor Asa Hutchinson will be giving a COVID-19 update at 1.30 this afternoon. You can watch that briefing as well live on our website, arquitectshomepage.com. 
Well, as we get closer to November, some legislators on national and local levels discuss alternative voting methods to limit the spread of COVID-19. Andrew Epperson tells us why some why some say Governor Hutchinson needs to make some important decisions soon. It is too early at this moment to make any uh, exercise emergency powers for something in November. This is Governor Asa Hutchinson last Friday, trying to clarify some comments he made a day prior. What I uh, express support for is what uh, we uh, changed the rules to allow in our special elections, which was no excuse early voting and we expanded the early voting sites. Which is really confusing, especially to hear him try to explain it as though he meant no excuse early voting, which again, is not a thing. You do not need an excuse to vote early in Arkansas. State Senator Greg Letting says he was surprised to hear the governor cool on no excuse absentee voting. He actually used an executive order to make that possible for some runoff elections we had back in March. Specifically after Hutchinson advocated for it in the presence of President Trump, a known opponent of alternative voting methods. And it's just not a fair situation. Do you have any comment on that? Well, I do. Of course, Arkansas supported a voter ID law. Good. Uh, but in terms of the election in November, uh, there's a lot of discussion about uh, how we can make uh, the vote uh, accessible if there is continued worry from a health standpoint. And we want to be able to use... Uh, uh, no excuse absent, no excuse absentee voting. Letting says Friday's statements did little to breed confidence in possible executive action on this issue, though he says the governor needs to act quickly to keep voters safe come November. Uh, I think the goal now is to get him to commit to it now because we just we don't know where we're going to be in November. Well, in Texas, here's a look at the new coronavirus cases. There are more than 55,000 cases statewide and 1,527 deaths reported. More than 906,000 people have been tested for the virus and more than 35,000 have recovered. Well, Faith Matters and one Shreveport pastor made some changes to his annual Memorial Day service yesterday due to COVID-19. NBC6's Zyneria Bird shares more. You call us to speak to you in prayer, God, even when places we would usually go are not available. Morning Star Baptist Church holds a special Memorial Day service to not only to remember service members who paid the ultimate sacrifice, but to also remember those who died from COVID-19. Just for five minutes, but to take a pause to remember the lives of those folks who, who have succumbed to COVID-19 and just to, to pray for those families um, who remain and those um, who are infected who are still yet alive. This came about after Pastor Jackson saw the death toll in Louisiana. I thought about making sure that we didn't forget that as we came to Memorial Day, what better an opportunity than to memorialize people who have uh, been victim in this COVID-19 battle. The Cattle Parish Coroner's Office is reporting more than 180 coronavirus related deaths. We don't get to hear the names mentioned here often. Um, there's so many obituaries that we don't get a chance to read, so many funerals that can't happen, so much grieving and closure that does not happen. The prayer service was streamed virtually on Facebook Live, taking a two minute pause of silence to remember the lives lost hoping to provide comfort to the families impacted by COVID-19. People are still in ICU units right now, and I just paused so that we would not forget that while we think about that, that this is more than about barbecue and, and gathering, that there's still something important going on in our country. Zaniria Bird, NBC6 News. All right, Tynera, thank you. And dozens of people in Bossier City ended the day yesterday with a full stomach thanks to a mealtime ministry. Each Monday night in May, churches in the area gathered to serve free grab-and-go dinners to the community. They prepared 200 meals each week, and last night was no exception. Of course, coming through the pandemic and people losing jobs and shut in and, you know, quarantine, but we wanted to just come out and be a blessing to those who may need some food or a good hot meal. Now, last night's meal included jambalaya, chicken, green beans, and dessert. The churches are planning another giveaway event later this summer around the start of the school year. Well, the Keep Calm Through COVID hotline is still open and providing a 24-7 counseling service to those who may be feeling overwhelmed, anxious, or dealing with COVID-19-related stress. 
Mental health and substance abuse counselors are available to the public at no charge. The number is 1-866-310-7977. Well, stay with us. Meteorologist Josh Marcius is next with a full check of this week's storms. And as most states reopen, local doctors are warning us that a real threat is still there. And later, have you gained the quarantine 15? Well, we're giving you some tips from a local personal trainer to help you shed those pounds. Stay with us. And now, your weather authority, Josh Marsis, certified the most accurate forecast in the Arklatex. Well, welcome back as we head into the afternoon today. We will see the return of some scattered showers and thunderstorms across the region. The thunderstorms not as widespread today as they were yesterday. Of course, yesterday we had to deal with multiple rounds of rainfall. Today it looks like it will mainly just be one round popping up this afternoon. So Louisiana has been taken out of the flash flood watch as well as most of northeast Texas. But the watch does continue from Cass County on to the north. So it does include Texarkana until 7 p.m. tomorrow evening. Still could see two plus inches of rain in the watch area. And just given the heavy rain we've seen uh, the past few days here, it could lead to some localized flash flooding issues, but the problem's not expected to be as widespread as uh, we had once anticipated. Pretty warm day, but not as warm as yesterday. Upper 70s and low 80s this afternoon. 79 in Texarkana, Shreveport at 82, and right around 80 degrees in Texarkana. Overall weather pattern for us, we have this area of low pressure. It's a little bit closer to us than what is expected, so because of that, it has actually pushed, pushed the threat for heavy rain into southeast Louisiana, but we still have this low here. Some disturbances developing on the base of that low, so that will kind of uh, cartwheel those towards the Arkeltex here in the upcoming days. So especially during the afternoon and evenings through Thursday, we will continue to see these scattered storm chances. And uh, great news for us today. We're not in the severe weather outlook, but I still think could see some gusty winds with anything that pops up as we continue through the afternoon. For future cast, it does show those storms popping up in the afternoon heat today, 3, 4 p.m., and then kind of moving to the north Notice the coverage of the rain, the intensity of the rain, not quite what it was yesterday. So that's an indication we're seeing some slightly drier air at the surface here, and that may continue for us tomorrow as we'll likely see a few scattered showers and storms around for your Wednesday and Thursday as well. Again, no really rhyme or reason to where this activity pops up. So uh, just kind of be prepared for rain here in the upcoming days, and it looks like the final push of rain. You can see uh, some of that late tomorrow and into Thursday. We may actually see the uh, heaviest push of rain here late Wednesday into early 
Thursday across the region. So as far as your rainfall totals here, uh, we'll take you through Friday afternoon and you still see the potential here to see maybe an inch or two of rain. So again, just given the heavy rain that we've seen recently, some of these totals here could cause some localized flash flooding issues as far as underpasses, some of the roadways, and that would particularly be true for the afternoon and evening commutes, but it looks like some improving weather conditions as we head towards the weekend. Yesterday I did have rain in that weekend forecast. It's now looking like that rain will taper off to an end at some point during the day. Friday may have a lingering shower on Saturday, but overall right now it is looking to be a dry weekend for us. Weekend highs will be in the mid 80s. Overnight lows will comfortably be in the low to mid 60s as we head into next week, and it looks like a dry pattern early next week. That's a check of your weather. Let's all right, thanks, Josh. In your medical headlines, as businesses reopen, health risks remain. So before you head outside, doctors say there are some things you should know. NBC6's Jenna Jordan explains. First things first, doctors say the threat of the coronavirus is real. And I understand people saying, well, it's not as deadly as we thought it was, or there's not as many people getting as we thought there were be. And that's because we took uh, social distancing seriously. The coronavirus is spread by the transmission of droplets from doing things <laughs> like talking, laughing, and sneezing. Doctors say the better the ventilation system in an enclosed space, the less germs are in the air. But when it comes to movie theaters, doctors say they're among the highest risk activities reopening. I'm not sure why those are opening back up yet. I don't know what the ventilation system systems are yet. I don't get that. I think there's other things that that are um, that could open up before that. People we spoke with don't mind grabbing a seat to watch the show. Movie theaters, you could space people out and it wouldn't be as risky. Barriers such as plexiglass and stuff like that, you can definitely come up with ways to make things safer. Doctors say salons don't have to be as dangerous. They say getting a mani-pedi and cut in color can be done safely. You can just have scheduled appointments and have distance between stations of six feet and have both wearing masks. That should be no higher risk than going to Walmart. The masks are key. The face coverings help prevent the spread of droplets. Wearing them is not always easy. It's really different. Like it's kind of a lot harder talking to people with it on because it's hard to understand. But doctors say they do make a difference. I don't think we're trying to take anybody's freedoms away. It is a choice, but I'd like to see people make that choice more often than not to wear the mask. I just hope everybody takes the normal precautions that they should you know, wear the face coverings and hopefully there's not a spike. Jenna Jordan, NBC6 News. All right, Jenna, thank you. Doctors say common sense measures like washing your hands and not touching your face can also help keep you healthy. Well, after the break, we tell you why making your kids eat certain foods could actually be turning them into picky eaters. We'll tell you more right after this.
This is NBC6 News Local Midday Update. Welcome back in your consumer news. Coronavirus scams are becoming costly for Americans. More than 52,000 Americans have filed complaints this year with the Federal Trade Commission over fraud related to COVID-19. Those who filed have reported nearly $39 million in losses. Experts say you should never give credit card or other personal information to anyone over the phone. Don't click on unknown links and emails and never answer the door for someone claiming to be from the government unless they can show proper identification. Well, health matters, and if you're frustrated with your child's picky eating, turns out becoming the food police only makes it worse. That's from a new study in the Journal of Pediatrics. The study shows that demanding that children eat certain foods or punish, punishing them by restricting foods does not help. Instead, kids become even pickier about what they eat. Pediatricians recommend that you do not demand that children clean their plates or reward them with dessert. Instead, try to make mealtime fun and take the pressure off what kids need to eat. And as doctors and researchers desperately search for a way to prevent COVID-19, another vaccine for the virus enters human trials. The vaccine's maker, Novavax, wants to test about 130 people during its trial. According to the Maryland-based biotechnology company, the vaccine works by producing high levels of neutralizing antibodies. Novavax says preliminary safety and effectiveness of the vaccine should be ready by July. And if you're like me and you've gained the quarantine 15, but you're worried about going back to the gym, you, we've got you covered. NBC6's Epiphany Lachey spoke with a personal trainer to get some tips on getting fit while staying home. Our whole world's been turned upside down. So the first step is just, just start. Just get up. Get up. That, that's the main thing. Get up off the couch and do something. Getting back in shape after being stuck at home can take a lot of motivation. According to personal trainer Terry Lynn, 85% is based on diet. You're going to go produce section, think um, fresh meats, fresh vegetables, fresh fruits, uh, things like that, and not so much on the interior of the grocery store where all of the cookies and crackers and chips. Lynn says after getting your diet together, focus on workouts. You can't outwork a bad diet. I can come in here and I can work myself to death in this gym for an hour, hour and a half, two hours at a time. But if I leave here and go eat that bag of Doritos, I'm undoing everything that I just did. For beginners, she recommends working out 20 to 30 minutes a day to build up your endurance. If you can't get to a gym, home workouts can still do the body some good. Anything that you can grab, like for example, a water bottle or a can of vegetables or a book even, do just like a body weight squat and pretend that you're sitting in a chair. You could even pull a chair up to you if you wanted to and try to hit the chair every time. Just we don't even have to have weight. She says to drink at least 64 ounces of water a day and write down your goals to help stay focused. You have to make yourself a priority even though you have all this other stuff. Epiphany Lachey, NBC6 News. Well, stay with us. One company is giving away half a million medium pizzas. We're telling you how you could score one. But first, let's take a look outside with our Louisiana Tower Camp. We'll have a final check of the forecast after the break.
This is NBC6 News Local Midday Update. We're going to take one last look here at our Louisiana Tower cam. You can, you can see a pretty nice looking day right now overlooking Shreveport Bossier. Well, if you just recently graduated, this story is for you. Pizza Hut is celebrating 2020 grads by giving away free pizza. The pizza chain posted on Twitter that it is giving away half a million medium one topping pizzas. Now to claim one, all you have to do is visit pizzahut.com slash grad party. Once there, you can sign up for a Hut Rewards account and receive a coupon. The giveaway ends on May 28th, but the coupons can be redeemed online through June 4th. And on the cheesy note, let's head over to Josh now for one last look at your weather. Josh. Well, here's the final check of your forecast. And again, today we'll see some scattered showers and storms during the afternoon heat. That will continue tomorrow and into Thursday. Rain not particularly heavy for East Texas and Louisiana, but we still have a flash flood watch in effect for the northern Arkansas through tomorrow evening. We'll likely see the rain around at least through Thursday, and those showers will start to taper off Friday into Saturday. Low threat for severe weather, but look for some gusty winds and lightning with the storms here in the upcoming days. All right, thanks, Josh, and that's it for your local midday update. We'll see you back here at midday tomorrow. Have a good one and stay safe. Your weather authority and the Ray Ford Thunder Truck, driven by the most accurate forecast in the Arklatex.